another episode of CoreCast. Uh, today we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, AC filtration and the different types of AC filtration, how they kind of uh, impact your audio system uh, and what they're actually doing. Uh, starting with the inductor-based conditioners, um, and one of the biggest sources of noise in your audio system is the fact that your audio system is a nonlinear load, and that nonlinear load uh, is actually going to introduce uh, various frequencies of current flowing through the audio system and those various current frequencies translate into noise voltages and so one of the ways to prevent the changes in current um, is by using an inductor which by design is is used to limit the changes in, in current. Uh, another type of inductor based filter is, uh, is ferrite. They absorb the magnetic field and convert it to heat by limiting the impedance. Um, and so they have a benefit of, yes, they reduce noise usually uh, up at very high frequencies and are great for RF, um, especially for television use. Um, but because they're limiting the impedance, you start to hear that limitation in terms of bandwidth. Um, the next one that you'll see in a lot of newer conditioners uh, are transformer-based, uh, either isolation transformers uh, or regenerators or balanced power. Um, and there are a lot of issues with um, that I see with uh, transformer-based uh, conditioners. Um, the first being parasitic capacitance. Uh, and what that basically is, is leakage capacitance coming from between the windings, um, which basically means you have noise that's passing through the transformer that's not being isolated. Um, and every transformer, at least if uh, a lot of the better manufacturers of transformers, will specify the leakage, uh, the leakage currents and the parasitic capacitances on, on their windings, and that's an important thing to pay attention to in terms of the effectiveness of that filter. Uh, the, the parasitic capacitances are an issue because they create leakage currents on the ground lines. When you're creating a leakage current on the ground line, uh, what's basically happening is you're introducing a current that's traveling down through your house wiring. Uh, and when you have a current on that wire, uh, the wire is going to have a finite resistance. And that resistance is going to create a voltage drop. And so when you have voltage drops between the different outlets in your audio system, uh, not only are you going to introduce noise, but you have a potential of introducing ground loops into your system. Um, and so it's very important uh, to, um, to eliminate parasitic capacitances and leakage currents. And there's a couple of other filters that also create those problems as well. Um, the other issue with transformers is output ringing. Um, and you can create a snubber filter for the output of the transformer to help to prevent the ringing, um, but that filter would need to be designed specifically for that transformer and specifically for the, the circuit that that transformer is connected to, uh, which means that you would have one power conditioner for one component that is very specifically designed. Uh, in that case, it can be very, uh, very effective. Uh, the next one is balanced power. Um, the idea behind balanced power is you're dividing the, the 120 hertz or 240 hertz lines into 60 and 60. Um, and what happens is you compare the two like you would on a balanced cable and you cancel out the noise differences. The biggest issue with balanced transformers is that you have parasitic capacitances that are going to make each of the windings slightly different. And when you have a slightly slight difference on those windings, there's nothing that's going to cancel out because there's nothing to compare. Um, and that is, is part of why usually a, a balanced transformer isn't going to have more than a 10 dB reduction in noise. Uh, one of the greatest benefits from using a power conditioner, and one of the reasons that you tend to hear such a big difference putting a power conditioner into your system, is because you're connecting all of your components to a single circuit, um, which is helping to eliminate the ground voltage differences between your outlets and between the components, uh, which will eliminate ground loops and help to prevent noise from being introduced into your system. Uh, with AC regenerators, uh, they're probably the number one source of ground loop noise in any system that I have troubleshot. Um, the, they generally, the way that they work is they either use a linear or switch mode power supply at their input that converts the AC voltage into a DC voltage. Uh, that voltage is regulated, and then they use an oscillator op-amp circuit to regenerate the AC line. And the biggest issue with that is that each of those components actually does, <laughs> creates a lot of noise. So if you have an oscillator in the circuit, that's generating a tremendous amount of high frequency noise. If you have a switch mode power supply in the circuit, which will be necessary to generate enough current to power an audio system, 
Um, obviously there are units that use linear power supplies, but their power uh, is so limited that you can't use them for more than just a digital front end. The next type of filter is just a capacitor-based filter, and you see a lot of different versions of this filter, whether uh, a company uses a giant film capacitor, or they use a bank of hundreds of capacitors. Uh, the biggest limitation to this, uh, and they can filter a tremendous amount of noise. Um, the problem is they're a lossy device, um, and so when you have one capacitor for every capacitor that you add uh, to the circuit, yes, you're going to filter more noise, but there's, there's a, you have only 100% of your energy. So if some of that energy is traveling through that capacitor, you're losing energy for every capacitor that you put into the system. And so it's going to limit both your transient response and your dynamic current that you can supply to your audio system. So in a lot of systems, yes, you can have a great uh, reduction in noise and it, it makes a very uh, valuable effect, but you're also limiting the, the, um, the speed at which energy can be applied to your equipment, which uh, in my experience is actually more important than using capacitors to filter the noise. Um, the other issue with capacitor-based filters is you'll see uh, in a lot of devices they'll, they'll use X or Y type capacitors. Um, X ca capacitors are used for differential mode noise filtration, which basically means they're a capacitor that is used between uh, live and neutral. And that type of noise is actually, uh, is actually more audible in your audio system than common mode noise. Um, the other type of capacitor is a Y-type capacitor, which is used between neutral and ground and live and ground. And the biggest issue with those capacitors, like a transformer, is you're actually introducing noise currents and noise voltages onto the ground line. Um, and the Y-type capacitors actually are going to generate, a lot of times, uh, more harm to your system than good. Um, Finally, you have LC filters, which combine the inductors that I spoke about earlier and capacitors, which can create a much steeper roll-off in terms of noise. Um, unless you're planning on putting several LC filters in series to have a high enough bandwidth, um, you're going to face a lot of issues with them. And one of the biggest issues is, one, they're lossy, uh, two, the output is going to ring, and three, they're gonna be, uh, there's going to be peaking based on the specifications of the devices that you're using. Um, in addition to that, you're going to have to calculate how that, that LC filter is integrated into the circuit. Um, and so the, when you don't know the input impedance of your power supplies or the output impedance of, of your other circuits, you're kind of shooting in the dark and that LC filter will only work specifically well for one device. And so it's, it's not something that will work in any system with any configuration. Um, and it's part of why you'll see one condition will sound great in one system and, and not sound great in another. Now we'll talk a little bit about what we do in our Kenai. Uh, the Kenai does not use any transformers. It doesn't use any capacitors or LC filters. It uses no inductors. Uh, the device is more of a passive power distribution system than anything else. Uh, the connection from the IEC inlet all the way to the the receptacles on the back, whether you're using the Shuko version or the US version, uh, it, is, uh, it, is 100, it is one wire from input to output, so there's no break in any of the wiring. Uh, the, uh, the device itself, the live neutron ground, are 100% separate on their own lines. Uh, one very important thing that we do in this device is the distance between uh, the live neutral and ground is kept very specific so that ground is actually equal distant in the middle between the live and the neutral. Um, the reason for doing this is because the magnetic fields uh, between live and, uh, live and neutral are actually going to introduce a magnetic field and noise voltages on the ground line. So keeping them equidistant and opposite allows us to cancel out the noise voltages on the ground. The other benefit of the conditioner, obviously, is the way that we ground the system. And because everything is grounded to a single point through our magnetic filters, not only are we reducing the ground impedance, but we're connecting everything to a single point to help to make sure all of the ground voltages on each of our outlets are identical. Um, in addition to that, we use our magnetic filters. And our magnetic filters are a very interesting technology. Um, that you'll see a couple of different audiophile companies doing uh, variations of this technology and, and we've kind of refined it based on, on what we've experimented and worked with them on. 
Um, the magnetic filters uh, basically work on, on the principle of an electromagnetic pulse. Um, when you are looking at a, a, an electrical conductor of any kind, when, you're, when you have an electrical signal flowing through a conductor and you apply a static magnetic field to it, you're actually introducing a current in the direction of the elect flow of the electrical field. Um, and when that happens, you're actually going to it, to read. You're actually going to reduce the impedance along that wire in that direction. And so you actually are able to create a filter that is exceptionally low impedance, that is almost accelerating the signals through to the receptacles and to your component. Uh, the other benefit of this type of technology, because you are uh, decreasing the impedance on the circuit. Um, you're actually improving the slew rate, which in turn improves the transient response of your power supplies. When you improve the transient response of your power supply, regardless of how good that power supply is, you're actually increasing the bandwidth that it is able to filter. And so for every device that you plug into this, increasing the transient response and slew rate translates to more noise filtration and improved performance for each of your power supplies. So that is hugely important because rather than relying on this device to work by itself on any system, we're actually putting this in to improve any component that you could possibly uh, connect it to without creating any limitations, parasitic capacitances, or ground voltages. Uh, finally, we have um, uh, one of our Katana 2 power cables. Um, the Katana 2 uh, works on the same principles as our, our Kenai Light. Uh, the Kenai Light is using the same magnetic principles, and we use the, the Katana 2 is basically a, a, a smaller version for a single component uh, of the Kenai Light. Uh, it uses the same magnetic filtration, um, and I find that a lot of customers will get a Katana 2 and a Kenai Light and plug the Katana 2 into the input uh, to almost double the filtration capacity of this unit. Um, that's where people tell me that it is the most effective, at least with this device. Uh, the difference between the Katana, uh, the, uh, uh, the Kenai Light and the full Kenai um, is, is pretty substantial. We do a lot of different things in the full version that we don't do in the light version. Um, for instance, um, I would show you the magnetic modules that we use, um, but they have over 500 pounds of pull force, and trying to bring them into this room, I would end up with something that looks like the Death Star. So it's uh, not something that I'll show you right now, but, um, but you can assume that with 500 pounds of pull force, they are rather large and heavy magnets, especially in, the, in that unit. Uh, with the the Kenai, uh, the full Kenai, uh, you can we have about 6,300 pounds of pull force, uh, which means that we have uh, several, several, several layers of shielding. Um, uh, we don't want to pull your house down, so it's uh, the shielding is extremely important. It's important for focusing the magnetic field. It's also important for keeping the field contained within the unit. Uh, we use, also use several layers of vibration damping and shielding, uh, just in terms of of blocking the noise uh, from entering the signal wires to begin with um, and uh, it's it's a much denser packed unit than the Kenai Light. Uh, to give you a comparison, uh, the Kenai Light has about 600 pounds of pull force and again the Kenai uh, has 6300. So it's uh, almost over 10 times the amount of, of force in the full Kenai. Um, that translates obviously to much wider bandwidth uh, much lower, faster slew rate, uh, and much better sound. Uh, and obviously, if you have any questions about our technologies or what we're doing with any of these devices or you want a trial period, we're here to help. Uh, again, send us an email, watch some of our other videos, uh, and uh, we're here to help.